How do twins form in the mother's womb? In the fascinating world of twins, there are several types of different twins. Today, we will explore how fraternal and maternal twins are formed in the mother's womb. Let us start with the fraternal twins, which are known as dizygotic or non-identical twins. This occurs when a woman's ovaries release two eggs. Egg one comes out from the ovary and moves into the fallopian tube, and egg two is released from the ovary and enters the fallopian tube. Both eggs make their way to the ampulla region inside the fallopian tube. Ampulla region is roughly this area. Around 200 to 300 sperm cells, having survived a challenging journey, finally enter the fallopian tube and travel to the ampulla region to reach the eggs. After the sperm cells storm the eggs from all directions, each sperm tries to bind to the zona pellucida to tunnel toward the membrane. For each egg, only one sperm breaks through the corona radiata and binds the zona pellucida. Using an acrosomal reaction, the sperm tunnels through the zona pellucida to initiate fertilization. Each egg is fertilized by a separate sperm, forming two zygotes, which turn into two distinct blastocysts. The two blastocysts travel down the fallopian tube toward the uterus. Each blastocyst implants itself into the uterus lining in separate locations. After the implantation in separate spots in the endometrial lining, each blastocyst develops into a distinct twin. Like any other siblings, these twins share 50% of their genes. They have separate amniotic sacs and separate placentas. Therefore, fraternal twins are a beautiful example of how two separate eggs can create twins each with its own personality and traits. These twins are similar to any other siblings in terms of genetic relationship. They could be two twin boys or two twin girls, or they could be a boy and a girl. Let us talk about identical or monozygotic twins. Identical twins form when a single fertilized egg splits into two, resulting in a twin. This occurs when a single egg is selected from the egg reserve and released from the ovary. The egg travels into the fallopian tube reaching the ampulla region of the fallopian tube. The sperm cells storm the egg, and only one sperm is needed to enter the egg to initiate fertilization. After fertilization, the egg splits into two, resulting in two identical embryos. The splitting can happen at various stages of development. If the splitting occurs inside the fallopian tube, the two blastocysts independently travel to the uterus. Each blastocyst implants itself into a separate location in the uterus endometrium. In this case, the twins are independent of each other, with a separate amniotic sac and a separate placenta. In the second case, the blastocyst travels to the uterus around day six and starts the implantation process. Right at the beginning of the implantation, the blastocyst, for some reason, starts splitting into two. When the splitting happens at this stage, it results in twins in separate sacs and shared placenta. Look at here. The twins have separate amniotic sacs but they share the same placenta. One of the complications that may arise when twins share the same placenta is what is called twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome. But we will cover the topic in another video. The last case is when the blastocyst travels down into the uterus and begins implanting itself into the inner lining. It splits late in the implantation process. When that happens, it results in the formation of identical twins that share both the amniotic sac and placenta. This type of twin is not very common. The most common of the three cases is the one in which the twins share the same placenta but have separate amniotic sacs. This slide summarizes the three cases. As you can see here, in the first case, one sperm fertilizes one egg and the blastocyst splits in the first 72 hours after the fertilization. At this stage, the blastocyst is still in the fallopian tube and it results in twins that are independent of each other with each having a separate amniotic sac and placenta. In the second case, one sperm fertilizes one egg and the blastocyst travels to the womb and splits at the beginning of the implantation process, resulting in twins sharing one placenta and have separate amniotic sacs. This is the most common type. The third case shows one sperm fertilizing one egg and the egg moves to the womb and starts implanting itself into the inner lining and it splits in the process, resulting in twins that share both placenta and amniotic sac. The question is, which of the three cases of identical twins, which we have just covered, has the most identical twins? Does late splitting or early splitting of the blastocyst impact how genetically related the twins would be? Please leave your answers in the comment section, and please give the video a huge like. Thanks for watching.